Let's say you have a nice responsive UI. Everything works smoothly, users can interact with the controls, resize the window, etc. But you have this long running operation you need to perform when the user clicks the button. Now everything freezes, the user cannot do anything and your application looks like it's stopped. Only after the computation finishes, the normal UI interaction becomes possible. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to tackle this problem using wxyield function and idle events. In the next tutorials of this series, I will delve a bit deeper and explain how to use threads to implement background processing. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss that. Alright, here's the code. In our frame constructor, we set up the layout with the controls and sizers. By the way, check out my basic layout video if you want to know more about how that works. Also remember that the link to full GitHub code is in the description. In the start button click callback, we run a CPU intensive task. Here, for demonstration purposes, we use a very slow sorting algorithm. So why does the application hang when encountering this code? In my introduction to events video, I explained how the event loop works in WX widgets, so check it out if you want more detailed explanation. But what you need to know for now is this. When WX widget starts, it runs a loop called event loop. It's just an ordinary infinite loop that checks for user events, updates UI, and executes callback code when events happen. For example, the code in onClick handler when user presses a button. It's all good when the task in the event handler is short. The loop executes the code quickly and moves on to updating UI and reacting to other events, like window resizing. But if the code blocks the execution for a long time, the framework can go back to handling the UI and the user sees an application that is unresponsive. The obvious solution is to run the CPU intensive code in a background task using multiple threads and we will explore this approach in next tutorials. But multi-threading adds another layer of complexity to the application and may introduce very hard to fix bugs like data races and deadlocks. In some cases, there is a way to introduce the illusion of smooth background processing using just single thread by implementing, in essence, custom multiplexing. This sounds very complicated, but it really is quite easy. Sometimes all you need is just a single line of code. With this line of code, everything is smooth. The application seems to perform the sorting task in the background while correctly reacting to user events like resizing the window. How does this magic work? The usual order of operations is like this. WX widgets runs its event loop checking for pending events. When it recognizes an event that has a custom handler we wrote, it executes that code, which may take a long time and block the UI, and then goes back to the event loop. By calling WX yield, we are essentially telling the framework, hey, here's your chance to handle your UI events, do the layout work, etc. Go do what you need to do and come back to me. By calling WX yield multiple times in our code, we weave together the execution of our code and WX widgets code. So it looks like our code runs in the background, while it really runs on the same thread as the event loop. We can add a progress bar to see that illusion better. We add a WX gauge object to our class, initialize it in the constructor, and update the bar in the outer for loop. It looks great, but there are some problems with this implementation. To better see the first one, Let's add some basing time measurements. We save the current time before starting the computation and after it finishes. 
we then display the difference or elapsed time in milliseconds. On this machine, our algorithm takes about 6000 milliseconds, or just over 6 seconds. Without WX yield, it shows less than 5 seconds. So we see that introducing this context switching using WX yield has some time overhead. If we call WX yield more often, for example in the inner loop, the computation becomes so slow that the progress bar does not even move. After calling it every 3000 iterations of the inner loop, we end up with the whole thing taking almost 14 seconds. So that's the first drawback. We need to be very careful with how often we call WX yield. Call it too often, you can considerably slow down the computation. Wait too long between the calls, the UI might become unresponsive. The second problem, at least on some platforms, is that the UI events will slow down the computation. The baseline time with WX yield in the outer loop is just above 6 seconds. If we resize the window, you can see the progress bar gets stuck and the whole operation takes a lot more. The only way to fix this is, unfortunately, to use separate threads. It cannot be done with WX yield or idle events. Here's another one that we can fix though. If we click close in the middle of the operation, our application crashes. Here's what happens. We call WX yield in the middle of our onClick handler. During the execution of that method, the framework handles other user events. If one of these events happens to be a close event, WX widgets will destroy the window, calling the destructor of the frame. So when we are back in our code, after WX yield finishes, our this pointer is invalid and it points to a destroyed object. When we try to access it, we get a crash. Solving this is not as straightforward as it seems. Note that we don't know what happened during WX yield. And because the this pointer might be invalidated, we cannot use some member variable flag, at least not in a straightforward way. What we can do, however, is to block the user from closing the window, delaying the destruction of the frame. Then break out of our processing algorithm and ask the framework to continue the closing process. Here's how to implement it. We start with the onClose handler and we bind it as usual in the constructor. OnClose event is interesting because when handling it, we have the opportunity to block it using veto. This of course is not enough because we simply block the user from ever closing the window, but it is a good start. We will need two state variables. The first one will indicate that we are in the middle of our long-running task. And the other, when set to true, will mean that the user wants to close the window and we need to break our processing as soon as possible. We take care of the first one, setting and clearing it properly in the on-button click handler and altering our on-close. If our task is in progress, we request that it quits. If there is no task running, we simply destroy the window. Now back to our click handler. If the user requested that we quit processing, we destroy the window, completing the close operation and return from the function, making sure we do not access the now invalid this pointer. And this relatively simple mechanics fixes our problem. We can now close the window in the middle of the background operation with no crash. Let's now move on to the second way of implementing single-threaded concurrency, using idle events.
When using wx yield, we wrote our task as a single function and used wx yield calls to allow wx widgets to do its work every now and then. With idle events, the approach is inverted. We separate our task into chunks, and we can execute these chunks only when wx widgets decides that it has some free time and emits an idle event. As you can see, this approach requires a careful redesign of our task. We get rid of the outer loop. Now, each call to the process chunk method is the equivalent of one outer loop iteration in the previous solution. We also made i a member variable to keep track of the iterations. We declare our operation object as a member variable of the frame. Then, in the click handler, we create the operation, set the label just like before, store the starting time and bind a handler for the idle events. The next time WX widgets emits the idle event, our handler will be called. Let's take a look at the handler function. We have two cases here. If we have finished sorting our array, we first update the labels. Then we unbind our idle event handler and reset the pointer to the operation object so that it can be automatically destroyed. In the second case, when we haven't yet processed the full array, we simply process next chunk and update the progress bar. Then we call request more, indicating we want to receive more idle events and continue processing. So there we have it. Background processing implemented using idle events. Note that this time we didn't have to manage the close event. We can close the window and no crash happens, because the idle event handler is unbound when the frame is destroyed. The last warning before we finish. Do not use wx yield or idle events when dealing with input-output operations, like for example networking. You never know how long the network operations will take, and with slow network it might be enough to make the UI unresponsive. Here we have an example of a slow network, where DNS resolution fails. We simply want to connect to the Google.com server and no calls to WX yield will help. You can see we are blocked until the call times out. In general, it's a bad idea to call any possibly blocking function on the main thread. To properly handle this kind of cases, you need to use separate threads. We will get to that in the next episode of this series, but for now, that's it. Thanks for watching.